Welcome to ASMR Reality. All proceeds from this channel go directly to the Animal Protection League. Please consider liking and subscribing to help me help the unwanted animals in my community. There is a link in the description if you want to donate directly to the Animal Protection League or become a monthly member to my channel. Thank you so much. Okay, in today's video, we are going to d discuss 10 chilling ghost stories that will haunt your imagination. So, get ready. Number one, the Grey Lady. Hampton Court Palace in England boasts a chilling resident, the Grey Lady. Legend has it that she is the ghost of Sybil Penn, an English courtier who was a nurse and teacher to Edward VI of England and personal attendant of Elizabeth I of England. After her monument at St. Mary's Church in Hampton was moved in 1829, several stories regarding her figure became popular in the area. It was said the noise of a spinning wheel was heard at Hampton Court, and that soon after a closed-up room with a spinning wheel was discovered. Visitors have reported glimpses of her ghostly figure dressed in gray, wandering the hallways and even crossing the palace's famous haunted gallery. Number two, the bell witch haunting. Originating in the early 19th century in Tennessee, the bell witch legend tells of a vengeful spirit tormenting the bell family from 1817 to 1821. Mysterious noises, physical attacks, and eerie whispers plagued the household. According to the Bell family, the otherworldly entity was able to speak, shape shift, and even be in more than one place at a time, akin to the poltergeists of German folk folklore. The haunting became so infamous that it is said that even President Andrew Jackson visited. After witnessing an excessively boastful witch slayer, get beaten and humili humiliated by the entity, he allegedly exclaimed. By the eternal boys, I never saw so much fun in all my life. This beats fighting the, Bridget the British. <laughs> Number three, the Tower of London. The legendary Tower of London is not just a fortress of stone in history. According to popular tradition, it is also home to several spectral inhabitants. Being a place with such a grisly history, its walls bearing witness to countless murders and executions, this should not come as a surprise. Guards and visitors have reported sightings of many ghostly apparitions that correspond with horse her her historical figures who suffered gory fates within the tower, like a headless Anne Boleyn or the tortured screams of Guy Fawkes. Some claim these apparitions bring an ominous forewarning of an impending tragedy. Number four, residual energy at Gettysburg. The Battle of Gettysburg was a turning point in the American Civil War, and its echoes reverberate beyond the pages of history. Many visitors have reported eerie occurrences, apparitions, phantom sounds of battle, and ghostly soldiers. Some believe the intense emotions of the battle left residual energy etched into the landscape. The bloodiest portions of the battlefield are said to be especially haunted, and spots like the Macabre, Macabrely named Slaughter Pen and Devil's Den are mentioned again and again in stories about ghostly apparitions. 
impressions in the area. Number five, the brown lady. Raynham Hall in Norfolk, England is home to the infamous brown lady whose spectral figure has terrified onlookers for centuries. Legend has it that Lady Dorothy Walpole, sister of the first British Prime Minister, accused of infidelity and locked by her husband in the family home until her death, roams the halls to this day. In 1936, photographers allegedly captured her ghostly image descending the grand staircase, solidifying her bone-chilling legacy. Number six, the Okiku doll curse. The Okiku doll residing in the Menenji Temple in Japan is not an ordinary children's toy, at least according to modern Japanese folklore. Legend has it that the spirit of the deceased original owner of the doll, a little girl also named Okiku, resides within it. The hair on the doll is said to grow mysteriously, and those who look into her eyes can get a glimpse of the girl's tormented soul. Number seven, the ghosts of Versailles. The history of French royalty is ripe with macabre tales that delve into the darker side of human behavior, so it should not come as a surprise that the opulent palace of Versailles, once home to monarchs and courtesans, harbors more than just royalty gossip. Visitors and staff have reported ghostly encounters from the restless spirits of Marie Antoinette and Louis the Sixteenth to the spectral echoes of the French Revolution. There's even a claim of time travel. In any case, the sumptuous halls of the palace hold far more secrets than they seem. Number eight, spectral presidents. The White House, the epicenter of U.S. politics, is rumored to host more than just the living representatives of the American people. Past presidents and first ladies have reported ghostly sightings, including Abraham Lincoln, Ulysses S. Graham, and William McKinley. A particularly, particularly frightening case happened during the Taft administration when the ghost of an unidentified 15-year-old boy called the thing instilled terror among the domestic staff. According to a military aide, the ghost often materialized as a slight pressure on the shoulder, as if someone were leaning over your shoulder to see what you might be doing. Eventually, Taft himself intervened, threatening to fire anyone who repeated stories about the haunting. Number nine, the LaLaurie Mansion. Can, uh, let me stop. So whenever my furnace kicks on, I have French doors on my, um, on the doorway going up my stairs, and they're not locked. They're just free floating doors, so when the furnace kicks on and the air pressure, that door creaks. So, it, it's kind of eerie talking about hauntings, but that's what happens. And when it shuts off, because it just barely opens them a little bit, and when it shuts off, it just closes back. So, that's what you heard there. The LaLaurie Mansion, considered one of the most haunted places in New Orleans. The LaLaurie Mansion has a dark past associated with Madame Delphine LaLaurie's gruesome crimes. Slaves and servants were tortured and killed within its walls, and historians suspect that she even abused and tortured her daughters. After the mansion was set ablaze in 1834, many of the atrocious crimes committed under its roof were revealed to the shock of the public, and Madame Delphine had to precipitously flee from the city. Number 10, The Crying Boy. A seemingly innocent mass-produced painting called The Crying Boy gained notoriety in the 1980s after an Essex firefighter claimed that copies of the painting were often found among the debris of incinerated houses unscathed. Rumors of a curse soon spread, leading many to believe that the painting brought misfortune 
and personal tragedy to its owners. Others even maintained that the eyes of the crying child followed them as they moved. So those are the ten chilling ghost stories. Now, let me give my take on these stories. So, I personally do not believe in uh, ghosts like this. Um, I think it's one of those things that, like, because I've never experienced it myself, I have a hard time believing it, though I know many people that do. Now, I do believe in, like, energy, and so potentially it could be something, there could be something to, uh, to it, but as far as, like, curses and things like that, I just, I don't know, like, witchcraft, and I, I just really struggle with it, because I think if it was real, surely somebody would have been able to really be, get really good at it, and accomplish things that would be more than just rumor, you know, and like, for example, at the White House, for one, Abraham Lincoln wasn't killed there. He was killed in Ford's Theater. He wasn't even in the same state. So, I just, I just don't think it, I, I just don't think, like, stories like that are real. I think maybe you're in places that are big and strange and people might not feel comfortable and hear noises. I mean, houses make noises. They creak, they settle, you know. So those things I think can be explained. Um, I heard something recently like about the fires in Hawaii where like the, anything blew didn't really get burned. <laughs> which is really strange, but, you know, there's all sorts of, like, unexplained phenomena, and I just chalked most things up to that, you know, as someone who, like, is alone a lot, um, you know, I, maybe it's a protection mechanism that I refuse to let myself believe that stuff, because then I'm not afraid when I'm alone, but I really just don't, I don't, I don't really, um, I just don't believe those kind of stories, but again, when I say I believe in energy, like, I lost a brother, most of you know this story, if you've been with me for a while, that when I was 28, I had an 18-year-old brother that died in a motorcycle accident, and we were really close, and I think about him, and like, I think about him, like, looking at me, like, knowing what I'm doing, but, you know, it's as if I think about him like a, a, a spirit energy, but I don't ever, like, see him or feel him. I just, because I want to believe that there's something after this, I, I do think about him, and I think about making him proud you know, primarily the thing that comes to mind with him, and this is something that's really personal, but one of the regrets I have is that because he was so much younger than me, so like when I was 18, he was 8 years old, and so when I was getting to the age where I could move out on my own, and I really needed to start thinking about my own future, and working, I really, that's what I started doing, our par our family was really poor, and so once I became of age and was able to work, I was working really hard to, to try to get ahead, so that I, at a, at a very young age, I knew I did not want to be in poverty again, or I didn't want to live in poverty like my parents did, I wanted to be better off financially. It's not like I thought the money would make me happy, but I knew I wouldn't be happy if I was poor. And so I, I started working hard and I moved out and he missed me a lot and I missed him too. And I would see him, I would visit and I would, you know, try to be there. But, um, 
wasn't um, it wasn't the same after that and I know that I could have done something differently and 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 then as he got older of course because we had kind of grown apart a little bit I mean we were still close and we stayed in contact and we saw each other but it, it never was the same you know and obviously without me being around him all the time and like sleeping in the same house with him I lost a lot of the influence that I had over him and he got other influences and you know so but but at the end of the day my, my point in telling you this whole story is because one of the things I think about when I push real hard to be successful is because I know that it was my early drive to become successful that, that took me away from him. And so, in order to make that worthwhile, to, to justify what I did, it caused me to press harder and to ensure that the reason that I wasn't with him was because of my push. Then I made sure that I would not fail because the worst thing that could happen is the reason that I separated from him was that I could propel my life forward and if I, if I didn't accomplish my goals, then all of it was for nothing. And so, I do feel like I've made him proud in that, in that sense that, I mean, I was a kid too, you know, at 18, I was a kid. And I mean no insult if you're listening to this and you're 18, <laughs> but it's true, you're not the things that you feel and do at 18 will not be the same things you do at 30 or at 50. <laughs> I promise you. And so, you know, I try not to be too hard on myself, but I do reflect back and I do feel like, you know, as I aged, I did think about it and I thought to myself, it did help to push me harder. But so just knowing, you know, that, that, energy from him kept me going the thoughts of him but as far as you know thinking that he's in this room with me right now or that he can see me it's just really it's it's challenging to embrace that you know and and feel it and really believe it with conviction i want to believe that there's something after this and that he's out there and that i'll see him again but then I think about, like, would he be 18 again? Would he be 18 and I be 50? Did he stay that age? Or has he aged too? You know, if he's 10 years younger than me, I'm 51. Would he be 41 now? Or, like, when, it, when a baby dies, would the baby still be a baby and the parents be old, you know? I don't know. It's just those... those um, the afterlife, you know, even if, you, if, you, if you're religious, like if you're a Christian and you believe in heaven, you know, what might it be like? The Bible is never really clear on that. Are we the same age that we died or do we still age? Or, you know, yeah, what age are we in heaven and do we age in heaven? And I hope there's dogs there. <laughs> Yeah, there's a saying, all dogs go to heaven, or maybe it was a book or something, but I would hope that would be true for sure. But certainly I I, I wouldn't be afraid to walk in some place that was supposedly haunted. And if I did, I would, you know, I would likely write off anything that I heard as like somebody's somebody's actually doing it like there's a tv show here in america i don't know if they have them in other countries as well but like ghost hunters that my furnace just shut off and that was the door closing but um the um the ghost hunters show it's been on for years and years and years and years and they go to all these different places and never once Every, every every episode, they're like, oh, God, look, you know, you better better watch this episode because look what happens. But there's never any real documented case of, of them finding anything. So, yeah, I, 
I'm a skeptic, an extreme skeptic, and it's maybe to a fault, but at any rate, that's just how I feel. Maybe you have an experience that's different. Tell us about it in the comments if you do. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you on the next one.